Well, you'd be hard pressed to find a bigger name or larger influencer in the mortgage banking space than our guest right now. David Stevens joins us from Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia. How are you, David? I'm great, Greg. Great to be here. It's great to have you. Tell us what you've been up to lately before we get into the weeds of the mortgage business. Well, since leaving the MBA, I I left the MBA at the end of September last year. I've joined a board of directors of a publicly listed real estate investment trust, Dynex Incorporated, and I sit on their board. Uh, I have just joined a board as an advisor, which will be coming out uh, sometime later this week. I've been working on policy issues still in Washington, D.C. in the background. Uh, writing some papers with some other folks, Mark Zandi, The Economist, uh, Jim Parrott, who's a well-known name in Washington. We've co-authored a piece. So uh, staying very busy and advising some startup firms uh, in in the background. So uh, keeping uh, busy, but not full-time. And you shocked the mortgage world when you announced your retirement. You were serving so capably for the MBA. You stepped down due to some health reasons. How are you feeling these days? How's it going? I'm good. I mean, you know, look, it was a hard job to leave. We built something really great there, I think, while I was there. Um, And, you know, the fact that I left when I did, the NBA was at a really strong point financially uh, and organizationally. So um, I did leave. I have cancer, uh, which obviously I've been very public about. Good news is I've had some really amazing treatments from the team at Johns Hopkins. And right now, as we speak, I'm in remission. So it's undetectable in me. Uh, which is pretty crazy for the type of cancer I have. So I'll take every day I can. Uh, yeah. And th- this is a good one. We're so glad that you're feeling better and that you're still an influencer out there. I see you posting all the time. You've got well over a million followers on LinkedIn. Why do you stay so involved at this point in your career? Uh, you know, one, I've just got a sort of a natural nervous energy about the business, politics, other issues. I think there's a lot to be done in the mortgage bank industry. I step in when I have a view um, and to the degree people read what I write, uh, you know, I just hope it helps at least inform and add a different view or a view that confirms or maybe a differing view to help people uh, work through issues that we're dealing with today. Well, let's talk about today because we've kind of got a perfect storm that has brewed out of nowhere in the mortgage space where pipelines are full, rates are down. Um, give us kind of a, a glimpse into your crystal ball as to how long you think this run is going to last. Well, you know, it's funny, Greg, and I, I know you've looked at some of the things I've put out. I, uh, we're an odd industry. We do well in, uh, in sort of recessionary times because that usually means there's going to be either rallies through federal stimulus uh, or flight to quality, either of which affects the bond market in such a way that it drives 30-year mortgage rates down. Um, and that's precisely what's happening now. I, I, you know, I, I look globally um, and listen to a lot of economists and, and really smart people talking about what's happening in the markets. You know, the global economy has $15 trillion in negative yielding bonds, um, negative yielding bonds. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that people are paying governments to manage their money um, and getting a negative return. Uh, in the U.S., the wealth gap is only widening uh, between rich and uh, poor, particularly the middle class, which I worry about is being wiped out. Um, and so while we're sitting in a time where job creation has been good, um, I, we could talk about wages. That's a longer conversation. Uh, and the housing market's been doing well and recovering, uh, going back to the Obama regime uh, post-Great Recession. Um, this low interest rate environment is going to be a great short-term uh, windfall for the mortgage banking industry, but it's a foreboding sign about what is likely to lead us into a recession. And the question in my mind is how deep will that go? And that's, that's for a longer discussion. And, and so how do you think that will affect mortgage business, uh, the mortgage business, when, when that, if and when that occurs? Yeah, I mean, so a recession is going to mean a prolonged period of low rates, um, but it'll also likely mean, uh, will mean increased defaults. And so uh, for all of us, we have to look at how deep is this going to go. Uh, you know, you can get pretty gloomy when you look at what's happening um, in the overall marketplace. And I, I continue to go back to the global market. The stress points are pretty, uh, are, are pretty concerning. Um, and people will try to temper that. I read uh, the chief economist for Freddie Mac put out some great data, Sam Cater, this week, um, which was you know, far more optimistic, 
but still talked about the foreboding downturn. The, the, the question is, how deep will this go? And look, I'm not an economist, so um, uh, I'm not going to predict. But I do say for all mortgage bankers, take advantage of it while you can. Um, but remember, refinance booms are temporary and the purchase market is where the business is made. So we need to see what happens as we go through this cycle here. All right, I'm going to give you some quick hitters here. Let's, uh, let's start a little round robin. Uh, the uh, QM patch, uh, the CFPB has proposed that it expire um, in a little over a year. Can you tell us what kind of, well, first of all, what is the QM patch to the layman out there and, and, and how might that impact the market, if at all? Well, look, when, Do- when uh, 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 Director Cordray and the team at the CFPB wrote the QM rule, there was great debate about, around this thing called safe harbor. And so they wrote a rule that had a, as, as all of us in the industry know, a hard line debt to income ratio of 43%, which is an absurdity into itself uh, because 43 can be too high for some and too low for others and not take into account other factors. They wrote what's called Appendix Q, which gave a whole bunch of compensating factors you could use in and around that debt to income ratio to help uh, maybe sweep in some more borrowers. But in the end, everybody realized that the way the rule was being written it was going to leave out, you know, somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 percent of borrowers who were being approved by the GSEs. And so uh, what the director did at the really the last minute was when they put the rule out, they put in what's called the patch. The patch said, uh, yeah, so here's the rule. But aside from that, if you get an approve or an accept uh, from Fannie or Freddie, um, that is also QM eligible. The GSEs were not in the original law. Only the government programs under the Ginnie Mae uh, programs, FHA, VA, and USDA, were given a permanent sort of hall pass that their guidelines would be QM exempt. Everything else is QM, is subject to QM. So the ending of the patch is a really big deal. And uh, what happens next, I think everybody should be looking closely at because in particular, if it narrows the footprint, it'll benefit uh, institutions with balance sheets, particularly large banks, um, but it, it could have adverse implications to uh, anybody else in lending who depends on an exit strategy uh, as it stands today, direct to the secondary market. So we need we need to be very active, everyone. And I've written on, I've written some paper on it. Others are doing the same, uh, all sort of sending a consistent message about what could be done to make this uh, rule work. What's your best guess as to what will occur? Will it actually expire? Will it be prolonged? Um, you know, it, it's interesting with the administration. There's, there's, a, there's some competing views uh, internally. There are those that think the, gov- the footprint of the government guarantee programs is too large, and they applaud the end of the patch. Um, there are economists with the American Enterprise Institute and Cato, which are conservative think tanks, which are writing pieces that the patch should simply expire and it shouldn't be replaced. Um, And they have great influence on the administration. There are others that don't want to create a lot of disruption in credit availability, particularly heading into an election cycle. Um, I'll be curious to see what Kathy uh, and the team at the Bureau do, but um, I think they're going to do two things. I think one, they're gonna try to rewrite the rule uh, to make it uh, more broad. And two, if they can't get there in such a way that uh, doesn't create disruption, uh, in a significant way, I wouldn't be surprised to see an extension of the patch. It would, uh-huh. it would not, it would not be going back on their commitment to get rid of it, but an extension would give them more time to perhaps get the rule right. 